saya kepada program Reduce Act to Water Chief Madaman, Member of Parliament, who is also the President of BCK, and all the distinguished guests on the dais, and my fellow countrymen. At the outset, I would like to express my sincere thanks to the organizers of this conference for associating me with this conference. Uh, I would also like to congratulate the organizers for having the courage to organize this conference under these uh, five topics. So I would like to bring greetings from the members and leaders of my party, the Voice of the People Party, and also from the people of my state, Nikhari. Uh, I would like to begin my speech with a reminder that we live in a free country and that each one of us is free as human being. I would also like to mention that the actual beauty of India lies in, in its diverse, I mean in its diverse nature and characteristic. And that the strength of India lies in the unity of its people. India is proudly known as the largest democracy in the world. However, the question here is whether different cultures, traditions and practices are allowed to thrive freely in this country and that the rights of the minority are respected? The reply is straight away yes, till 2040, when the new dispensation came to power at the center. Efforts were made to throttle the freedom of the people, especially the rights of the minorities. We should not forget that the Constitution of India was adopted in the name of the people of India. It was reflected in the preamble of the Constitution of India, which says that we, the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice, social, economic and political liberty of thought and expression, belief, faith and worship, equality of status and opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity, assuring the dignity of the citizens and the unity and integrity of the country. The framers of the Constitution were fully aware that in a democratic country like India, people or its citizens are supreme and that any action on the part of the rulers has to be in accordance with the provision of India, which the people have agreed to adopt. It took almost three years to deliberate and debate on various provisions in the Constitution of India before it was finally passed and adopted on the 26th November 1949. The Constituent Assembly had to listen to the views and opinions 
of members representing different communities and regions. We cannot deny the fact that there were many areas which were brought into the dominant of India through the use of force, like the Kasi states, which has now formed part of the state of Meghali. The execution of the instrument of accession stands witness to the fact that we were never part of India before the advent of the British. Even our leaders had made it very clear while deliberating in the Constituent Assembly that we do not want to be assimilated completely into the Indian culture and way of life, which has therefore culminated in the incorporation of the Sikh Shri into the Constitution of India. Therefore, the present leadership needs to be reminded that though we have agreed to be part and parcel of India, we are not willing to give up our traditions, cultures, beliefs and practices. Furthermore, it would be foolish to imagine that we will be less patriotic because we are governed with different provision of the Constitution. A case in point is the American federal system in which the unit in the Federation enjoy vast amount of autonomy which is also the source of strength and the emergence of the United States of America as a superpower. It would be wrong to suggest that all Indians have to embrace one religion, one culture, one tradition, one language in order to make India strong and powerful. Rather, it will disintegrate the country and promote divisions and hostility among the people of India. In fact, it is the duty and responsibility of those who are at the helm of affairs to ensure harmonious and cordial relationship among all communities in India and to create a sense of brotherhood among different sections of people of the country. When it comes to religion, it needs to be reminded that religion is not supposed to be the subject matter of the state. However, it is purely a personal matter. It is therefore disturbing to see that there are groups and organizations who are trying to impose their belief, culture, and religion on the entire population of the country. This, I feel, is not acceptable and must be resisted and opposed vehemently. The manner in which the Constitution of India was framed and the powers and function of different authorities are vested is indicative of the fact that center and state relations should remain cordial at all times for the smooth functioning of the federal structure in the country. However, it is very unfortunate that national parties in India have many a time misused the constitutional provision for their own political benefits. The Constitution of India has in Article 154 1, Clause 1 mentioned that governors must ever remain conscious of their constitutional obligation and not to sacrifice either political responsibility of parliamentary convention at the altar of political expediency. However, despite this clear statement, we have seen and we have witnessed numerous instances 
where governors were behaving as mere agents at the hands of the ruling dispensation in the center. Moreover, it was mentioned very clearly in the Constitution of India that governors has no discretionary power except in certain and specific provisions. According to Article 163 1, which speaks about the Council of Ministers and the Governor, within the inverted comma, in this discretion, clause 1 of this article, it says the difference between Article 74 1 and Article 163 1 is that the latter speaks of any functions required by the Constitution to be exercised by the governor in his discretion. But the only instances of functions required by the Constitution to be exercised by the governor are number one, the power of the governor of Assam under Parat Night of the Sikshu and the functions of a governor appointed to be administrator of a union territory under Article 239.2, the power to make rules under Article 371A1D, matters related to present district under Article 371.1F, the individual allocation of money provided by the government of India between parts of Nagaland under Article 371 to 371A to B. The expression in this description in Article 161, 66, 1 should also be read accordingly. Clause 2 of this article says, besides the governor has certain special responsibilities under Article 371 2, 371 A1B, 371 C, 371 FG, which the governor has to discharge according to directions issued by the president, and therefore without the need to consult his council of ministers. And clause 3 of this article says, unless a particular article expressly so provide an obligation by the Senate adopted of the government to act in this discretion cannot be inferred by implication. Article 163 makes it quite clear that except in cases where the governor is required to act in this discretion, he is to act on the advice of the Council of Ministers. We have been witnessing the arm twisting tactics adopted by the central government through the use of central agencies like ADs, CBI, in order to pursue their political agenda. It is very much unfortunate that parties in power have openly disregarded the rule of law. You know why I decide to attend this conference today? It is because I apprehend the danger that may put the country at risk. I strongly feel that we should be prepared to fight back, not only for our personal survival, but for the protection of the Constitution of India. The growth of India does not depend on which religion we belong to. However, it depends very much on good and effective governance. Personally, I understand that there is no other principle which is better than what it is written in the scripture, which has been my very foundation in the field of politics. Therefore, I strongly believe that it would be for the interest of the country that we incorporate God's principle into our politics. The Holy Scriptures have categorically stated that the kind of governance which the Almighty had commanded. If 
I may be allowed to make a mention that according to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 19 and 20, it says, You shall not pervert justice, you shall not show partiality, nor take bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. You shall follow what is altogether just, that you may live and enter the land which the Lord your God is giving to you. If we decide to incorporate God's principle, there is no place for injustice, there is no place for corruption, and there is no place for partiality in the government. I would also like to quote what Lee Kuan Yew, the founder of Singapore, said. He said, I quote, that we cannot afford to forget the public order, personal security, economic and social progress and prosperity are not the national order of things. That they can, that they depend on ceaseless effort and serious attention from an honest and effective government that the people must elect. So the bottom line here is that only clean and effective government can really promote the state, can really develop the country, not any other factor. Therefore, it is our duty to protect the freedom which we have achieved through the struggle of our leaders. India does not belong to any political party. It belongs to the people of different communities, regions and ethnic groups who have come together to make India an independent country. Why should we allow someone to take away our freedom? There has been an attempt to create a narrative that India belongs only to the Hindu-speaking people or the Hindus for that matter. However, this narrative is not going to last as it is not based on facts and truth. Therefore, through this platform, I would like to call upon all the right-thinking people in this country to rise up about party politics irrespective of caste, creed, religion, ethnicity to save this country and safeguard the constitution of India. What the country requires now is a fight against corruption, poverty, exploitation. We need to get rid of this petty politics who's trying to influence people in the name of religion. Sometimes the minds of the innocent people are being diverted from real issues. It is our duty to enlighten the people about the real issues that the country is facing. Let us work together with an aim to make India a superpower. Let us not divide India in the name of religion, caste and ethnicity. Let us also strengthen the bond among different states in the country and maintain its true federal spirit. Lastly, but not the least, I will call upon each one of you. Let us resolve to fight for more autonomy to the states and for the protection and promotion of the indigenous people of respected states. With these few words, thank you. Thank you very much.